gives us an idea of where people live. Thank you. So I'm a geographer, and therefore I'm addicted to maps. That's out now. And what I want to talk about today is I want to show you the world as you've probably never seen it before. Since I only have four minutes, let me go back 500 years in time. 500 years ago, a person called Mercator came up with this type of map projection, which helped us to navigate the oceans, which helped Europeans to colonize the planet, which was basically good for navigating around the world. That's the reason why this type of map projection is still being used today by Google Maps, Apple Maps, you name it, because the underlying technology or the underlying principle is very useful for coming from A to B and having north always up. The problem with the Mercator projection is it distorts. It distorts heavily. If we take a true picture of the Mercator projection, it wouldn't even look like this, but it would be infinite. It would just carry on and on and on. That lies in the principle that is underlying this mapping technique. So we have distortion in the map, and the areas are bigger the closer you come towards the polar regions. Therefore, let me step a little bit into the future from the perspective back then. 50 years ago, a person called Peters came up with a map projection, which wasn't entirely new, but he sort of reframed um, the debate around mapping, and he came up with this map here, which is called the Peters projection, or is known today as the Peters projection. He wanted to create a fairer picture of the planet to avoid these distortions from um, being shown in the map. And this is basically an equal area projection where each area is proportional to the size of the countries. What you can see here as well is the map is distorting. Every map distorts because we need to make a compromise if we want to do, turn something three-dimensional into something two-dimensional. But what does it mean to make a fairer map? If you want to, take, to talk about people, then we need to show a map that shows people. And here's the problem. Earth at night gives us an idea of where people live. About 95% of the world's population lives in about 10% of the area. So in normal maps, we are wasting a lot of space when we talk about people. How do we address this? Here's my solution, and here's what I've been working on. Um, the solution are, at least for this particular problem, are cartograms. And cartograms are basically distorted maps. As you know, all maps are distorting, but they are distorting not by physical features and by, let's say, real Euclidean space, but they are distorting by other quantitative measures. So stay with me on the next animation. This is the world map that shows you where people live and not where places and spaces are or where sheep live or where no one lives. What is happening here is each area on this map is resized according to the number of people living there based on an equally distributed raster. And the actual effect that we're getting here is that we see where people live. And we see that China and India are amongst the biggest countries in the world. We see the Sahara disappearing, etc., etc. Basically, looking through this lens, we can see that not all people on this planet, for example, have access to electricity to shine up brightly into the skies like the people in Western Europe do quite wastefully. And it doesn't have to stop there. We don't just have to look at people, but this type of map um, transformation can give us real imp interesting insights into how our environment works. Just one more example, bioproductivity on this planet basically show on, showing us nature's heartbeat throughout the seasons. So I wanted to give you a little insight into how we can look at the world slightly differently to gain new insights into what is happening in the complexity of um, the 21st century. If you want to see more of these maps, you can go to our project's website where we have hundreds of these different types of visualizations. Thank you very much.